I was only one of maybe 30 colliers on a face that would shift as a minimum of 20 tons per day every day. Uh, they were men who was doing 40 tons a day. They were that good and they were that strong. By the time I was 25 years old, I thought to myself, there must be an easier way of making a living than this. I qualified as a deputy, and from then I was an official and colliery deputy and overman. Our coal went right over the world. And when they actually developed the steam coal scene, and they realised then there's a huge market for this, not just the Royal Navy, but all shipping all over the world, this was the finest coal you could have. I don't think I disliked anybody I worked with. You couldn't dislike somebody when you your life depended on them. Like. We used to have a big uh, deployment board with everybody's name on it. You'd have all sorts of names, yeah. Polish, Yugoslavians, Lithuanians, Italians, all sorts of people working together. Very good reputation in South Wales for workers. I think most of them do. The empty shaft was very unique. Big bend, about three quarters of the way up in it. The miners, they wouldn't go. If they knew they had to come up the empty shaft, they wouldn't travel up in it. I think it was more frightening than anything. You used to see the men, it'd be comical to see. They'd be coming up a pit at quarter past two, and then they'd be running down the hill, down at two or three pints to catch their bus to go up to Gatley. The last day on strike in Britain was in this Lewis Smith colliery. We went underground on the Monday and we came up on the Friday. We hadn't told anyone and there was 28 of us who stayed down in this underground. One of the boys cracked and had to go out. It was hard. In the blankets, no seat rags, you just stepped in a manhole. It was really uncomfortable. We tried to keep the mine open, that was all we tried to do. The men looked after you, you looked after your buddy, we all looked after each other. If you didn't do that, the men wouldn't respect you, they wouldn't want you to work with them. When, when I lived in my street, nearly every neighbour worked in the pit. The majority of men worked in the pit. In the olden days, when it was my father and my grandfather, they would work in a cold face from the time they were a young lad right up until retirement age. There's not many miners lived up to 70. My grandfather and my father died from coal dust. They were getting out of breath a lot. And then later in life then, uh, he ended up on oxygen. I think he retired at 60 and he died before he was 61. And my father, he had dust. By the age of 57, he was dead as well. The colliery represented the whole community. It was at one time, there was over a thousand people working in Mardi, all living locally. Whatever was doing went back into the community. In football, rugby, 
cricket, darts, skittles, snooker. There was 13 chapels and churches and 13 clubs and pubs. My grandfather used to tell me that pubs years ago it would be open at 6 o'clock in the morning, especially on payday. My great-grandfather, and he was killed through an accident in Mardi Colliery. Uh, he was taken out and taken home on a gamble. He was put in the front room, uh, laid up on the table. And this was going back in 1911. And he was left on the table where he died overnight. He left seven children. The oldest was 11 and the youngest was three, three months old. Everyone, as far as I know, worked in the colliery. I didn't want anything else. I knew wherever I worked underground, we were safe. We knew that we could rely on somebody if anything did happen. We, I met so many different men underground. In Mardi Colliery alone, there was close on 1,800 men working there at one time. But I've got fond memories of Mardi and number nine because of the comradeship and the memories will last in my heart forever and ever. My father became a miner, my uncles became miners, so it's the tradition of coal mining. All males in, in my family were coal miners. You also were working with men who you respected, who felt the same as you. But the sons and, and the grandsons of my, of my of miners. I'm proud of it, you know, I've always been proud of the fact that uh, these are hard working people. The majority of my work in life, we, 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 we knelt because the seam is only about less than four feet high, you know. Helmet slowly came in, you know, we were, we were in die cap. Often there were funerals of men that died quite young, but had pneumoconiosis. A big killer in the wrong there. That coal contains dust that is uh, extremely dangerous. We were a family and that's all we had was £23 a week to keep three children, you know, and, and everything else going. We went through a whole 12 months of debt. You had to be strong. And many nights I broke down, you know, you'd be in your bedroom and you'd be, how much longer are we going to go through this? And to see the women the women were pushing the men on. When the strike was over, you thought to yourself, what the hell did we do that for? Because no sooner it was over, these all these men were out to work anyway. My father and my other brothers all worked in the colony. So I went to the colony. I dreaded the thought of it. 
I remember the first fortnight, all my arms were bleeding for days. The cold was so sharp and I was only a young boy. We all used to hard work. I was going to finish a second day. I was afraid of the dark. Because once you put your light out, you couldn't see the hand in front of it. You were liable to be killed every day because of the conditions you worked in. It was the Cam Bryan explosion where 26 were killed on the focus. I had a brother killed in it. You were sort of isolated from reality in a way, and so people would say things to you underground that they wouldn't dream of saying to you in any other circumstances. It was a, a completely different world, and I enjoyed it. I hated Margaret Thatcher. I didn't like Arthur Scardian either. I thought they were two people with massive egos and an agenda of their own. She wanted the destruction of the trades union movement. He wanted the trades unions to run the country. It wasn't the done thing for a miner's wife to be working. So a week before we got married, I had to give up work. I had to wash all the colliery clothes, make sure that there was food on the table when he came in from work. Everybody's front door was open. You could walk in and out of everybody's house. Everybody knew everybody. We had nothing, we had no money, nothing. The times are happiest.